Hello everyone, my name is Ryan, and welcome to a new video in the Casual Online Gaming series. Today we'll continue our 8 Dan journey, so I don't want to say this is the road to 9 Dan, but it's pretty. that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, so yeah, we won one game, one win from last week. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, what happened was, you notice that we're, I'm actually quite a bit into this game. Uh, what happened was, I started a recording, or I thought I started a, a recording, but then I didn't actually. I didn't have uh, my re recording software open. So what ha what happened was I was talking to myself for about 10 minutes until I realized, um, but yeah, we're back. <laughs> so what happened in the top right was actually pretty interesting. So my opponent a pr low approached and double approached. But then he in the real, a regular Drosek, he should have, have Hani and Tatch, but then instead he actually just extended so I just protected and then he exchanged a few moves so these stones are dead actually so um, I feel pretty good about this game right now um, alright so he attached here I think I want to Hane and descend um, if I extend he can Hane and do the two space extension but after I Hane it's effectively a one space if he does this move again so yeah, that was like my two second reasoning for that. I think the benefit in the top right is really good. So I'm actually pretty happy with the, how this game is going right now. Let's see how my opponent uh... Oh wow, so my, I guess my opponent is tr struggling in, at 8 Dan. Okay, so he attached here. I think I want to haunt it. Do I want to haunt it? Uh, so if I descend, what will he do? He I think he will. Well, if he blocks, so that's one. Or if he jumps out lightly. So those are two potential moves. I think Hane isn't too bad because if I descend and he extends up, I might not even get the turn. So if I Hane and he Hane's back and I connect, then effectively I just got the turn. And yeah, so I want this direction. And as long as I can keep this group not alive, I can extend out to the center and this direction has value oh he actually extended now this move is actually slightly surprising because no, I th normally you would want I, you, I thought you would might either cut or Hane to play lightly because normally you want to um, attach against your opponent's stones um Well, I guess I will extend because now his turn is not directly sente. At least that was my plan. Because this extending move is very big. If I extend out here, he's going to Hane and be able to escape in the right direction. But now if this cut doesn't work for him, then he's going to be in big trouble. So, hmm. Now my, my opponent is trying to get another Sente move off of me. I didn't really know whether I should have clamped. If I clamp, he can play the tiger's mouth and he can escape this way as well. So if I peep here, I guess it leaves the... Um, if he jumps out, it's a little annoying since I have this stone here that I could try to intercept. So if you were to escape, I don't think he can do it too well. 
So it's a good sentai move to get off before coming back here to connect. So now the question is still whether this Atari works for him. Uh, my first instinct is no, but that's just kind of speculation. But I feel like if he Atari's into sends I can jump, and if he blocks, I connect. So yeah, it shouldn't work out for him. <coughs> no. Yeah, I think I need to save the stone still. So I'm still keeping the general direction, but effectively I did get the extension move. So in terms of the shape, I should be pretty good. And since he has a weak group here, he won't be able to invade my right side. So basically I can I can call that territory. And he, sh he should still owe a move here. So I'm not sure whether he wants to jump out or... Because if he pushes over this way, I'm pretty happy with that. I can just um, take the territory first. Um, and uh, he does that. So, well, that's pretty nice. Um... Hmm, I was actually looking whether I should hunt it, but if I hunt it, he can hunt it back, so it's not really meaningful since I have to connect back anyway, and he can extend, so I decided to just extend out. And if he ignores now, I can still enclose this group, and it's still relatively big. Since he can't make an eye here, he's going to have to make two eyes in the middle here, which is not that easy, it seems. So, he's going to have to spend another move. Um, hold on a second, he chose to extend once more. Oh, I see. I don't really want to protect, though. Yeah, I think I need to, though. Um, or else... I'm going to have some problems. So I'm going to just protect to make its territory first. Because if he pushes and cuts, then he can tarry here. And I think there's something. Okay. Uh, well, I guess this is a pretty normal exchange. I think I should look for a more efficient move than just the knight's move, because if I play knight's move, you can attach. And then... I think the, the group is locally livable still. So that's the word. So I'm going to try to aim for a little more than... just... Um, in closing, in Sente. <coughs> oh, he attached here, though. This is actually pretty bad shape for white. Um, but how? Let's see. How do I make this into... Oh, I think I should have extended. I shouldn't have haunted. That was a little bit careless there. Okay, yeah, that works. But then, again, this is actually 
he he's his group is still not alive yet after these exchanges and I think I can just jump all the way up here if he connects that's gonna be very that's gonna feel very nice since he can't jump out he's gonna have to push and then I can extend so basically he's gonna give me all these moves over here and then he's gonna have very little potential of any upper left <clears throat> so that will reduce the efficiency of a lot of these moves that he played earlier yeah so also it's not that clear that this is alive yet I get I think um, Well, I think I just push and cut, and I just uh, close my eyes and push and cut. I'm going to have to do, um, obviously I can't let white connect out, but this is actually, he's reducing his own liberties by making these exchanges. And that might be pretty bad for him. So right now is, I'm not sure if I that I can Hane. By Hane, he can Atari Atari. Atari and push. I think I'm pretty happy with extending. I'm, it, it, it feels um, too dangerous uh, if I Hane here because this group has a lot of liberties and I don't want to make it that um, I have to kill this group. Um, so I think the benefit is really good anyway. <clears throat> yeah, I think I just keep extending. It's very awkward shape for him because he's there's this weakness here that it's it's still there. So he's gonna have to spend another move, and he's pushing me right into his potential. Okay, so he spends another move to protect. So this is actually looking really good. Well, I'm gonna just uh, play the big moves now. Um, we should be at least in good shape. Oh, Kosumi. That was a little surprising. What does he need this quick sente for? So this is still a very big move. There's Atari here. Um, oh, is he going to escape here? Wow. That's um, also kind of surprising, I think, for me. I didn't really expect my opponent to do that. <coughs> well, obviously my upper group is more important. So I want to play there first. So that's his sentes. Now, if he Atari's here, <laughs> I'm going to have to be able to capture the center. Oh, it's actually not so easy, is it? Maybe it was more severe than I thought, but I really can't. Um, let myself protect once more. What? Oh, I see. So he's going for the center, actually. Oh, this is actually not very good for black because if he gets connected all the way um, and he's actually going for more than just connecting back okay wait I think I can connect I'm pretty sure my opponent made a mistake because if I connect any descents, 
And a honey here. There's actually no way for him to capture my metal stones, so he'd be in trouble. Well, I there's no I have no choice, so let's do it. I think if it's a trade where I capture the center and he captures these stones, I'm gonna be pretty happy as long as I get sente. But if I don't, I guess it will be another story. Oh, I think I'm lagging slightly, but there's no choice now. I'm gonna have to just play this out. So he can Atari. Wait, yeah, he can't. Yeah, he actually can't capture my five stones even. So I definitely have to connect. There's no choice. Okay, now, <laughs> so. Which is bigger? <clears throat> I think I need a simple estimate on the board right now. So what happens is if I play here and I capture the lower group, I'm, I think I'm just gonna get Sente here and go into the corner. I can also play something on that side. So basically, after this move, these center stones are dead. If he attaches, I can wedge, and he can't Atari out. So I have nothing to worry about anymore. So I can just do the rest. So actually, what happened? So what did, what happened here? He Atari out. Um, it's equivalent to he, him taking a big end game on this side in Gote. So I think it's not too bad for Black at least. So, how are we doing for points? Well, I have almost 60. I have pretty much 60 in the top, in, in the, on the right side. I'm definitely going for the corner then since he connected. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is actually good. Huh? Why didn't he honey? This is definitely a mistake. He should definitely have haunted. If he haunted, I'm not. I wasn't even sure what to do. Because if he, if I blocked when he descends, um, I have no points in the corner, and also there's a bit. Uh, there's at least a bit of Aji here in the middle. But now he, I'm just alive in the corner. I don't really have to worry about you know, other things here. <coughs> Hmm? What is he trying to do here? I'm pretty sure none of these things will work. So he's, he has this cut now. Um, but he wedged, so that kind of gives that part out, but he's got a little bit here. Yeah, well, I don't think these exchanges are good for a weight either. Yeah, so 60 points in, in the, on the right side, plus about 20 elsewhere. That's a lot of territory. 80 points. So white needs about 60. So how much does he have in the lower left? 
10, 20, 30. 35 or so. Plus three more here. And which means he needs about 25. Yeah, so it should be a pretty easy... I have a pretty decent lead right now. I'm gonna attach, see what he does. Because if he gives up a little bit, then I don't really care about those two stones anymore. So I'm trying to see what exactly he's willing to give up. Okay, then I come back here. And then there's also a jump into the corner. So basically, uh, he captured about 15 points. more, uh, Slightly more than 15, but he lost quite a bit in the corner. So if I descend now, it's basically me I between jumping in and jumping up. So... Oh, he can connect here. That's something I, that I didn't realize. Okay, I'll give that to him. Okay. <laughs> There's still an attachment here that's almost fatal, so he's going to have to protect that. Um, what I can do is, I think I can clamp. Yeah, I think reducing the upper side is relatively urgent if he plays a move here. Because I don't want him to add another one, which will then make everything territory. So, uh, I'm going to reduce that first. Also, this side is actually a very big end game. If I uh, just honey and descend, very easy move, but that really expands the uh, upper right corner. And also, if yeah, compared to if he does that, then I actually have to protect inside. So, <clears throat> so it should be a pretty easy reduction. So now I think we pretty much have a really good lead because it's really hard for white to convert any of that potential and uh, black has a lot more territory still. So. so he extends up. Um, I guess there's no point saving this jump. I'm just going to make this jump. I actually want to jump once more. I'm not sure whether that's slightly aggressive. Okay. Not sure why he exchanged the peep because that actually leaves another. It leaves an endgame for me essentially. If I block here, um, he actually had to make this exchange because. These two stones have a lot of free power, so um, if he doesn't do that, I can. Well, maybe I can even capture one of his groups. So he's gonna have to. Yeah. So this is the 
this is a very big end game. Too big to miss. Um, I definitely can't let him get the Hana here. Okay, so he extended. Okay, so did my <laughs> I guess you can't tell at all by this, but um yeah, can't tell at all, but it should be a pretty good lead. Um if if everything I said was not complete gibberish. Um should have a decent lead now. So again, there's this jump into the corner that he has to protect right now. So I think Block still has about the same amount of points. So I have 6 in the top left, plus 10, 20, 15, 16, 17. So about 80 points still. Um, 80 strong. Uh, what point has? 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 46, 47, 57, 58, 59, 60. So he's at about 65. About 65, but slightly weak. Yeah, I don't want to go to. Uh, hmm, I hate these pro moves. Yo. I think I'm just gonna capture. I don't think this is any good, because if, before he could have blocked, and now when he blocks, the honey and connect is not necessarily sente. And uh, so he's basically just lost points. Um, for no reason, really. Okay, so he, yep. Yeah. This is definitely uh, one of the bigger endgames. Um, I think I can make him block on the inside. What is he trying to do here? So I'm gonna Hanai first and Atari. Actually, after this exchange, um, it actually puts more threat into the center. Okay. I don't think it's something that I want to follow up with quite yet. Um, I think I should... How should I even do this? Should I descend? I think he's pushed his luck too far here. Huh. Well, after this exchange, he can't even cut. Yeah, and actually the 
This stone here is not that big because I can still Kosumi and play the Tiger Snow and still salvage most of that territory there. Um, so it's not too big of a deal. Okay, that was a very bad move for endgame. Uh, I think I got a little time pressure there. Let me just exchange this so I don't forget. <laughs> this is definitely not the best way I could have done this. I think what I should have done was I should have haunted and connected here. Uh, actually, maybe not. I don't know, but this this it's it's good enough. <laughs> and then I'm going to. So me here before he makes this honey. So I can. Wow. I'm pretty sure this side is bigger. I think my opponent is just trying to counterattack me everywhere um, because he feels behind, which is actually a very good strategy when you do fall behind. Since this tiger's mouth is sente, I can uh, descend now. <clears throat> yeah, there's no doubt about this loved group being dead. Well, he, he captured this, but I also saved my own stones. So, just by kind of from the looks, uh, what block captured should be bigger. So. No, so I think this should be it. Um, another trade that favors block. Whoa. I think I might be able to get. A liberty race. Also, with my dead group on the uh, upper side. If I play this move. I see. So he's got a Ko here. Now, okay, this Ko. Is it actually a co? <laughs> Don't know what he's doing there. Actually, I was looking at this cut, but I actually didn't need it since if you target, I can connect, right? So. It's actually a bit of overthought. I thought I actually needed to cut here and then sacrifice a stone for it, but that was an awesome move. Yeah. All right. Good game.
okay. It's trying to trick me there. There is a cut here if I don't connect because if he captures, um, that also has a weakness over inside here. Okay, that now that is not sente, so I'm gonna just keep going the end game. So I guess he wants to continue. Well, I guess we just finish the game and uh, reveal. It's a pretty interesting fight over here, I think. I'm not. Sh I don't think I played the best move, but um, I guess it ended up. <laughs> uh, okay. I think what I want to do actually is just like that. Um, let's just do that. I am. I'm getting lazy. I'm getting. I'm just being lazy now. I'm saying, um, please resign. <laughs> I'm just gonna fix everywhere where you're trying stuff and protecting all my territory. Uh, <laughs> he actually protect here. I thought he was gonna just leave that co. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, normally, I I can get another end game out of this, but so if I play here, if he blocks, I can play here, and it'll be a one step co. But and but it would be super heavy for white because black doesn't really lose much if black loses. But it's a one step co in favor of white, so that's kind of circumstantial. Um, because if black if black loses this code no matter what, then it's gonna lose points. So, gotta be careful doing that kind of stuff. So there is a liberty race here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think this is a big move, cutting this group off because after this he's gonna have to fix one, two, three, four. Um, so it's worth at least okay, four points, but also it includes some of the extra points I, that I gain from, no, actually, he's going to have to fix here anyway. Well, yeah, I guess it's not, I don't think it's bigger than this move then. Yeah. I think this is actually helping my end game because when I just think about it, it's not the same when I can actually talk it out. Okay, he resigned. Okay, let's let's review. Um, I think my <laughs> my Wi-Fi is slowly slow, so I'm actually in uh, Miami right now, but I'm um, I just love playing Go. So let's. I always I always have my go server running. So this is actually what happened. Um, he, d he had a high approach to I don't think this is good at all. Um, you should always finish the Joseki here. Um, Hane and attach. So I thought this would have been something. That it was among my variations list. Uh, but after this, he actually played a few more moves that were kind of bad because they just died. He just died here. Um, no reason why he should exchange that. So, let's see what happens in this fight. So I was actually contemplating whether I should descend or Hane. Um, so if I descend and he blocks, then he could potentially just make eyes and make this group alive on the side. Wasn't sure what was better, but I felt like if, if I did this, then this 1-2 exchange would have been decent. So that's why I played that move. Um, but yeah, in the game, uh, I thought after he said he really needed something here. Because if this doesn't work, this extension move is so big, it makes this group very weak. And all of White's shape is just generally bad because he doesn't have any eye space. But I don't think this actually works. Because, well, one, I think... 
I might be able to just attach, but even if I race with this group, um, I don't think white would even have enough liberties. So, you know, because if he blocks, I can make the box a5. So, yeah, I don't think white could win. This, but yeah, so this felt really good because, again, after extending, this shape is super good. Um, so I think here I probably should have Haneed. I was slightly soft because after the Hane I can actually Tanuki. And, well, well, although it does leave a potential move here. So I actually, I don't know. But I guess both, both, both shapes are kind of weird now. Since white is not really alive here. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> actually, in the game, I think... Yeah, so this was a big move. Um, I think he should have just um, captured this. And then here is a lot different because black, white is actually pretty much alive. In order for black to kill, black would have to tarry all the way up here. And then you can see when white extends, there's a lot of problems with black's shape. So basically this is a live shape. And I, black doesn't really want to attack Atari here because now also white shape is a lot better, much stronger. So I think that actually made a huge difference when my opponent extended where he should have just Atari. And I wasn't able to get the Atari, so that was my misread there because I think white can just do that. And yeah, although you might be able to see that here black can actually capture this, but it's a, it's a, it's gote so it's it's too small. Um, it's really not worth spending move here, and and white can get sente and get over here. So I I misread here when I played the hane. Didn't realize he could cut, but afterwards my opponent just came up. So I think I should have just extended to the left. And if he connects, there's still some stuff inside. It's not a very clearly alive shape. So probably um, Aji in the future as well. But in the game, I was really happy with this because this is such a powerful move and allowed me to get a lot of these moves which went straight into White's potential. So I was really happy with that. And then this fight, actually, I was a little nervous again. So I think he definitely should have caught because if Block has to capture this way, then white would get another first move here, and I think this would. Um, I think white might be able to attack, split the group. But let's see if we do this. Does white have enough if we just defend there? Oh wow! So white would have enough if there's nothing inside the territory. So this would have been a good strategy for white, actually, just cutting directly. So if I hunt it below, then yeah, if he connects here, block and honey and connect. But yeah, this is so this is so much potential. So I really made a mistake here, I think, and I think I should have seen more. Yeah, I think maybe should have done something here. It was pushing through here was bigger than I thought. And that would have been pretty catastrophic if White played the cot, but he didn't. And I thought this was... It would have been really bad if I had to con it, it would have been the same, but actually I could have I could connect. And then it ended up being really good for Black, because Black got Sente, and that's huge here. And this trade seems pretty even, because normally White could have cut here anyway to capture the stone. So he, he captured a few more stones, but he also lost a lot of stones in the middle. So it actually was a really good trade for Black again. And then again, this invasion, I should have just haunted. Uh, it was a little greedy for me to push into the corner. I'm not sure why White didn't haunt it here. He definitely should have, because if Black blocks, then when White descends, this is very uncomfortable. If, white, if Black wants to live, Black has to play here but then there would be no points in the corner because it's Seki. 
And also with this cut, white could potentially do a lot, a lot here. So if black jumps, then yeah, the same thing would happen. Yeah, but I mean, I guess in the end, black is leading because of the trade being really good for black. But still, I think white should have done that. But after this, um, black gains the corner without losing very much. And I think I just dealt with this a little too soft. Um, for example, I think if I just extended or did something here first, so if I just attached first, then I would have been able to actually just live these two stones. Um, yeah, because white is actually pretty weak as well. For white to cut, um, white has to get cut as well. So I don't think these could have died. But I was I was a little too happy with the with the game, and I gave up a little bit. But I guess it didn't really matter too much. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, later, what happened? Yeah, I was a he was pretty upset that he didn't get the honey in, uh, but I guess he didn't really have a chance to do that. So, but yeah, this is pretty much when. Um, Yeah, this is pretty much win. Oh, the Tsuji I was talking about on the lower side. Here, if white blocks, then when black plays this move, it's actually locally a call. And it's a one step call though. So if white has if white is behind, then white is really happy because you know white could just fight the call and ignore this because uh, even if black even if white ignores Black can't capture white. Black has to start a co. So this would be not a good move if you were ahead. Um, only a good move when you're behind, or you when if black has a lot of culprits. So uh, actually, this is a very. In I think it's it's a pretty typical Moyo game. Although you might it it might not be inherently obvious that that's the case, but I think it's actually a pretty typical Moyo game. And the uh, both both of these fights are actually interesting. It's really important to keep your shapes strong in these kind of games because weaker shapes, you're gonna run into all sorts of problems, and your opponent will benefit from them. So I hope you guys enjoyed that game on commentary. I really had a lot of fun making it. Uh, always have. Uh, those exciting moments when you play on uh, Fox Wei Chi. So in light of the holidays, I wanted to uh, share another memory with you guys. So t this photo was actually taken... Actually, I'm not too sure now to come think about it, but it must be in either 2005 or 2006. Um, so if you notice in the photo, that's me. Um, and this was one of my first games that I played against a very strong pro at the time. So um, this guy, his name is Zhang Wendong, and he's a 9 dan professional. Um, you guys probably haven't heard of him, but he um, was one of the few players who actually ranked up to 9 dan in uh, professional ranking tournaments, actually. Um, and contrary to what is like now, Actually, quite opposite to what is now, actually. 9 and professionals back then were very, very strong. Um, so, that was one of my first games against him. And so this was actually... This game was... Uh, this photo was taken in Ottawa. And that's where I grew up in, in Canada. Um, it's actually a very small city. I, like, some people haven't even heard, of, uh, heard about Ottawa before. Even though it's the... You know, it's... You know, just the capital of Canada. Um, but anyway, I grew up there, so I have a lot of fond memories of that place. And I think the reason why I had so much fun playing Go nowadays, part of the reason why is that there was a very vibrant Go community in Ottawa. And it was all thanks to the Chang family. So actually you can see Mrs. Chang here in, I guess, the mirror. Um, but they really coordinated a lot of Go tournaments. They had a lot of... We also had... 
casual gatherings there, so, which I really miss, where um, everyone, all these Go players would just gather for like a dinner party, and then everyone would play Go, and I think one of my favorite Go events is just very these casual dinner parties, and the food was also really good. That was probably why I, I liked going. Um, you can actually see in this photo that I tried one of my tricks against the 9-10 professional, and he, he was probably not really happy with that. I actually remember that this game was a... Uh, it was a... There was no handicap. There, it was, it was a half a point Comey. And... I think I actually did pretty well in this game. Um, but I know I know I lost, and he actually beat me pretty badly in the end. Um, I, I got completely destroyed during endgame, and I think that was my, part of my deficiencies, which he pointed out. So I actually learned a lot from this game, even though I don't think right now I remembered quite how this game happened. But uh, yeah, I tried the Taisha on, on him, and uh, yeah, it didn't really... It didn't. I didn't really uh, benefit too much from it, but uh, it was it was quite the experience. And uh, you can also see this group is live in a seki. Um, there's a fake eye there, and yeah, you can all, you can pretty much see all of this game really. You can see me playing any, a move here, and he was obviously playing a simul, um, so all of our handicaps were were lower. But yeah, this game was. It was one of my first games against professional. I played against a few pros when I was really little, but those really didn't count. Um, so, um, very interesting memory there. And although I don't remember it fully, I'm sure this had a pr pretty big impact on in, in my Go experience in general. And, yeah, and you can see me there, like, I'm... I'm I'm super focused on it. I was really dark. I probably I, w I was running out in in the playground a lot, um, but yeah, it's just so focused there. And I think f generally for children, it's it's really a different experience because usually they're you know always hyper and running around. But then it was always nice to get that side of of yourself where you're just sitting there focusing for a long period of time. And yeah, I think that's. Part of why Go always really appealed to me because it was so different from all the other things that I was doing at the time, like soccer and you know just just playing in the playground and biking and everything like that. So um, anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas for those who celebrated, and hope you have a wonderful New Year. And hope you guys are enjoying the Casual Game series. It's actually been thir over 30 episodes, so I'm really glad that. There are so many supporters, and I'll definitely keep this going, and hopefully I can bring even better and more interesting games to you in the future. So if you enjoy this video, uh, feel free to give me a like, and subscribe to our channel, and follow us on our socials, and I will see you next time.